A clear company vision is great, but it often ends up as a decor piece on the office walls. Business as usual has a nasty habit of disconnecting operations from strategy. That's a quote from a recent article by Modus Create titled Implement OKRs with Jira and Confluence. We're going to take a high level look at some ways you can do this at your organization. I'm Seth, an agile aficionado, and this is a fresh take. All right, first, let's get a few things out of the way up front. As much as people bash Jira and Confluence, I really like them. Remember that we prefer individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So they're just tools. Uh, They shouldn't replace individuals and interactions, but they do help tremendously with shared understanding across the organization. Yeah, they can be misused. Um, People can do some really terrible things with them. Uh, But if you keep individuals and interactions, shared context, shared understanding, uh, the forefront, then the tools really don't matter, good or bad. Now, Modus Create, they're the authors of the article that we're going to unpack today, and they are a globally diverse group of Modites specializing in digital transformation to help clients build competitive advantage through digital innovation. Now, I've used them at every company I've ever been at since 2012, and they've not once disappointed. So check them out. I'll put a link in the description below. They have experts in Atlassian products. So if you want their help getting this done, Um, then reach out to them right away. I'm not being sponsored or paid by anyone for this post. My opinions are legit, though I would be happy for a sponsorship. Anyone? Anyone? No? So it's just that I've always loved objectives and key results, OKRs. The concept is a really great one. And as I mentioned, I really like Jira and Confluence, and I love Modus Create. So that trifecta came together in this article on implementing... OKRs with Jira and Confluence written by Modus. So let's not waste another minute and uh, jump right in. So the objective and key results framework, OKRs, is a goal setting framework that helps teams define uh, measurable goals and track their progress, focusing on outcomes over outputs. OKRs are industry agnostic. They're culture agnostic. They work well for teams of all sizes across all kinds of different industries. I'll put a link to uh, the OKR framework information in the description below so you can get into a ton of detail about it. But Modus breaks the implementation of OKRs with Atlassian tools into seven steps. So let's take a look at those. Step one is define your objectives and key results. Now, this video isn't going to go deep into how to define your objectives and how to write meaningful key results um, in detail. There's a lot to it. Um, how you do it, when you do it, at what levels you do it. Um, The article talks a little bit more in detail about them, and then the link to uh, the OKR framework uh, goes into it in a lot more detail. But let's do touch on them with a quick explanation. So objectives are clearly defined in inspirational targets. They are not business as usual. You want to define what you're trying to accomplish, the outcomes you're trying to achieve, not defining what you're already doing. Um, So here's an example become the preferred employee for remote engineering professionals. That is an inspirational goal that you might be doing some activities around that, but you're going to clearly achieve that outcome as the preferred employer for remote engineers. Now, key results describe how you're going to achieve an objective, and there should be about three to five of them per objective. Any more than five, and it's unwieldy in tracking um, the success of all the key results against the objective, and any less than three um, means that the Objective is probably a little too specific and has measurements built into it. And key results is really where those measurements need to happen. So that three to five number is the sweet spot. Now, key results are defined in a way that they're measurable. And when accomplished, they complete the objectives. If you can do all the key results and not achieve the outcome that the objective is striving for, then you don't have the right key results. And This is because the key results are the measurement of the objective. So if you get all the things done and you hit all those measurements, then the objective should have been achieved. So they need to be measurable. Here's some examples of concrete and measurable key results versus ambiguous key results based on the example objective of becoming the preferred employer for remote engineering professionals. Key result one, in a concrete way, you would say hire 10 senior full stack engineers Uh, ambiguous key result would be something like strengthening engineering expertise. It's the same thing, sort of, but you're not being specific. 10 senior full stack engineers, did you get 10 of them? Were they senior? Um, Another concrete 
second key result here might be promote three engineers to leadership positions. An ambiguous key result would be motivate existing team members. Now, career progression is obviously a great way to, to motivate but just saying you're going to motivate leaves the door too wide open to what that motivation is going to look like and how do you measure whether or not you did motivate it. So the assumption here is that promotions of three key engineers is going to motivate them and others for their career advancement potential. So you say promote three engineers. You can measure that. Did you promote three? The other thing is you can say three or more. Um, another concrete, the third kind of concrete key result could be launch new onboarding process in Q2. An ambiguous one would say revise onboarding process. So they're both saying, let's do something different with the onboarding process. But one of them is setting a target. It's setting a goal, something that can be measured. Did we uh, launch? Did we not only revise the onboarding process, but did we launch it? And are we using it in Q2? So that's the first step is you got to define those objectives. And then you got to define the key results for the objectives. And then once you have that done, the next thing is, is is understanding the reporting requirements. And really, it's not a once you have it done, you need to understand the reporting requirements. But the second step mentioned in the article is understanding reporting requirements. Now, I think that one of the ways that you can create meaningful and measurable key results for your objectives is to understand what metrics are going to be measured to determine the outcomes, right? So if you have a high level objective of become the premier um, employer for remote engineers, then there's an idea of how we know that we've accomplished that. And if there isn't, there needs to be some specificity of what that's going to look like. And you discuss what those metrics are going to be. How would you measure it? How would you know that the outcome was achieved? How would you know that you're falling short of the outcome? And then those metrics, understanding um, how you're going to measure the outcome, almost inadvertently become the key results. So you define those metrics. Um, and then a metric gets assigned to a key result. A key result belongs to an objective. And again, if you're tying your metrics to key results and you're keeping your key results somewhere between three to five, and any organization should probably have three to five objectives in flight at any given time, depending on its size and its ambition and its ability to, to, to handle. But if you have three to five objectives, each with three to five um, key results, then you have somewhere in the, the order of um, 15 to 20 measurable elements that you're trying to use to define whether or not you achieve outcomes. And that's really the beauty of this framework here is that it lets you have a clear line of sight from the goals and objectives of the organization down into measurable implementations through key results that then break down further into the day-to-day -day work. And you can see exactly how my day-to-day -day work is working towards accomplishing a key result and in the, in the accomplishment of that key result, I'm progressing an objective forward and that objective is going to achieve some outcome for the organization. So the third step that Modus Create says you want to do is to define JIRA hierarchy and logic uh, or issue hierarchy and logic. And out of the box, JIRA has a three-tier issue hierarchy. It has epics, issues, and subtask issue. Uh, people name these all kinds of different things. Uh, issues might be called stories. They might be called something else. Um, but the, the top level in JIRA out of the box is an epic. Issues belong to it. And then tasks belong to, to that. You're going to need more than that to do objectives and key results. You're going to want something like goals. I've seen them called themes or initiatives. These are high level issues. They're your annual or multi-year outcomes you're working towards achieving. You're going to want objectives. Uh, these are usually typically around a quarter. Um, and then you're going to want a key results issue. And those are typically a quarter or less. Um, now, the article is going to go into much more detail on the issue hierarchy and their relationships to one another, what belongs to what, what can be assigned to what, and then the difference between OKR issue types and work item issue types. So go give the article a read to get details on um, what that structure looks like fully integrated. But just know that you're going to need more than the first three um, items that come with Jira out of the box. Step four is implement custom hierarchy in Jira. Now, advanced roadmaps in JIRA, it's a feature of the JIRA cloud implementation, uh, enables you not only to set up that custom issue hierarchy, but it facilitates visualizing whatever macro or micro level of that uh, work that you want or those issues that you want. Um, so all the teams doing their work just like normal, they grab a story or a task, they progress it through its uh, Kanban board and Scrum or Kanban or however you guys are doing your, your agile work. They progress their work through 
just like normal. You don't have to change anything about that implementation in JIRA. Instead, you're layering on top of it with advanced roadmaps and these custom issue types to where now those issues are belonging to maybe epics and the epics belong to a key result. The key result belongs to an objective that belongs to some larger annual or multi-year goal. And so in the advanced roadmap view, you can see all the way up and down that chain at at whatever level you want. So if you're reporting on information or somebody's looking at information, um, it's it's real time or near real time uh, information. They could be looking at you know how well have we progressed on uh, the key results against this objective. So maybe you're only looking at objectives and their key results, and you can see the progress of the key results. Now that is a roll up of epics or issues that are under the key results that then belong in sprints or or however you're managing that in JIRA. But then you can drill all the way down into your day-to-day work and developers at any point in time can take a look at a story or a task and say, what does this task belong to? Okay, it's this story. That story belongs to this epic. That epic belongs to this key result, which is moving this objective forward to accomplish this goal. And so it creates a clear line of sight from your aspirational um, objectives down to the day-to-day work, which increases engagement, energizes people towards accomplishing those things because they know where their work fits in the larger picture. And then the larger picture is comprised of the work that's actually being done. The fifth step that Modus Create recommends is to set up an OKR dashboard. Now, OKRs are um, only effective if the goals and progress against those goals are communicated and visible to the entire organization. So advanced roadmaps helps you do that. And the article goes into a lot more detail on how to set advanced roadmaps up. Um, But then also you want to set up a counterpart um, in like dashboards. So Jira has a bunch of reports out of the box and charts out of the box, uh, but you can augment that also with other tools like custom charts for Jira um, or structure. And these allow you to create incredibly powerful visualization from your JIRA issues so that you can look at a dashboard of metrics that are comprised of the measurable key results belonging to objectives. And so you can see in single shots on an objective level or maybe at multiple objective levels or multiple objectives at once, you can see the progress the status where you're at with it. Now, again, these tools are not intended to replace the individuals and the interactions. So we do prefer the individuals and interactions over the processes and tools, but we still value the processes and tools. It's like reading a book. You wouldn't expect the author to tell the story to every individual themselves. Instead, they cap they capture it, encapsulate it in a book, and then disseminate the book to multiple people who can self-serve the information. And so your JIRA dashboards work Similarly to that, they're more dynamic in nature because it's like a book that can constantly be updated um, with content without having to re redeliver it. Uh, which you know, audiobooks, I guess, and eBooks uh, have that benefit. Man, technology is awesome. But um, but these dashboards serve that same purpose. It's not the specific tool necessarily, and you're not living in in making decisions based on what you're seeing in the numbers, but those numbers do inform your interactions. They do inform what individuals are doing and how that's progressing the organization forward. So the sixth thing that you're going to want to do is um, create documentation and confluence. So again, part of radiating the information is core to objectives and key results. I should at any point in time be able to see what the objectives and key results are of any particular team or individual on a team um, all the way up and down the entire organization. So just like advanced roadmaps allows me to track progress and see work done against these, as well as you know see the actual objectives themselves, the confluence page allows you to um, have that information. So maybe there was uh, discussions and prioritizations that went into the defining those objectives. Maybe there were certain key results that were decided for an objective and others that were discarded intentionally. Like all that kind of information can be captured so that you not only have the information at hand, which the advanced roadmap is going to give you and the executive dashboards in JIRA are going to give you, but you also have the information that that fed into those decisions. Uh, And then that context is available to anybody at any point in time. Hopefully there are participants in the meeting. So when they see it again, uh, it it jogs their memory. It reinforces the ideas. Um, It may even create new ideas because it didn't make sense at the time. But now with learning that you have going on, it makes more sense. And so they have those original ideas available to to feed um, the the iteration. And really, I'm, I'm jumping straight into the seventh step there because it's such a natural progression that once you're radiating this information and you're managing it, is that you want to do the seventh step here, which is feedback and iteration. OKR implementation is not this one-time 
bang and you're done. It's it's not a prescriptive process. It's it's something that you roll out, you roll out um, over time and you define, you refine it and, and redefine it and you iterate on it. Just like anything else that you would do in your organization with it, that kind of agile mindset, that agile approach is you view it with transparency, you measure it, you inspect it and you adapt. And so that's true with OKRs. So the point is that as you see these status updates, as things are progressing along, you can see that an objective is not reaching its completion. What are the conversations happening behind? Why can it be recovered? Does it need to be abandoned? If you know three quarters of the way through uh, uh, a quarter or um, a third of a way through a quarter that you are not going to obtain that objective, then the question can be asked, is it still worth us churning on it through the end of the quarter if it's not going to if it's not going to be accomplished, or are there any ideas that we can pull out of our hats to salvage the accomplishment of that objective? The other thing is, is that some objectives finish faster. And so then you have opportunities there to then augment and, and start forward looking at, at more work to be done. You don't have to drag out the, um, the questions around, is it really done? Is it done, done? Um, you know, those types of things. So the Measurement of it allows you to then have immediate feedback and you can iterate on it. It reduces those feedback loops from iteration to iteration. You can see things in real time. You don't have to wait till the end of the quarter to say, did we accomplish what we were trying to accomplish? Um, and again, you might have a bunch of lagging metrics that are beyond the scope of an, of an, object, of an objective and key result. Um, that you're going to measure for the overall success. But if you're able to define those leading indicators, KPIs, or the activities that need to take place with specificity that if done, set the objective up for success, allow you to complete that objective, um, then you can measure those lagging indicators to say, okay, how well did we define the key results? If we thought all these things would create the outcome that we looked for, we knew it would accomplish the objective, but did it create the outcome we were trying to achieve? And if not, how can we better couch our key results against objectives for future objectives. And then what does it mean that we didn't hit what we were trying to hit? And then that factors into uh, future objectives against your annual or multi-year goals. So now that you have those outcomes defined through objectives and measured through key results, you can manage the system and prioritize or optimize it for minimizing your output and maximizing your outcomes. All right. So let me know in the comments, have you used OKRs? Have you ever seen them? used? Um, have you used Atlassian products to use them uh, together? Or do you even have a completely different way of creating a clear line of sight from your goals and high level uh, strategic objectives down to the day to day work of individual uh, contributors and teams? Um, feel free to post that in the comments and let me know. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps get the reach out there for me. So until next time, stay agile aficionados. shaky camera. I'm going to move forward in my, when I readjusted in my seat, I stepped on the tripod and then it makes the camera rock. So let's try that again.